So once I have my plan views completed, I have to start creating my sectional views. So the first sectional view I'm going to be doing is of the driveway paver. So rather than work on any details here, I'm going to work around the perimeter of the drawing where I have some space and then I'll just create some viewports in order to view the image. So I'm going to copy a section of this particular drawing. This is the driveway and then I'll edit it so it looks correct. And this I'm going to move down to here. And then I'll trim away the de details. Now these areas in here, which were basically hatches, I'm just going to backspace them out, get rid of them, select them, press delete. I don't need these trees. And that's the area that I'm going to draw my section from. So I want the plan view in order to extend lines to create the actual section from. Now some of this line work is good because I can use it to extend and actually draw my section. Now, in order to draw my section, I could use what the recommendation was by the manufacturer. And the recommendation here was um, to use six inches of compacted fill and then another five inches of uh, subcompacted fill. So these are two different granulars and then a one inch setting bed. And these profiles of the stones themselves actually came from the manufacturer's drawings. And all we did here was we copy and pasted them in place and basically took the manufacturer's section from it. So I'm going to use some of this in my project here. So let me copy some of this. But I'm going to change it a bit just so that you can see what kind of variations you can do with this. So I'm just placing it here. If I take a look at this edge, one of the um, concerns I have with an edge like this, so here we have the sod right beside it, is that over time this edge will spill over. Just the weight of the vehicle or if cars are driving or with their tires right on this edge. Um, maybe they can't see where the edge is because of snow. It doesn't matter. Over time we're going to get some movement here and it's hard to maintain this clean edge. So I want to use something that has more of a a curb detail to it. So I've gone to the PDF files that I've provided. I just inserted it here so I can see it. This is using different methods of creating a cleaner edge by using a concrete curb and a footing that I can be set in. And this one is kind of unique. It's also using a setting stone. So this is a six by six by 12 stone and it is embedded into a concrete footing. I like that detail. So I'm going to use the same sort of detail here, even though it's different from the drawing that I have. And I'm going to create a six by six concrete curb or stone and then embed that in, in um, a concrete footing. So let me make this landscape layer current, make current. And I'll draw this stone. Now it shows to be a, a fairly ragged finish and we can create that. Um, let me just do this first. There's the stone itself. And that's the general shape of it. I have some other tools I could use here to create a more realistic stone finish or some sort of edging to it. And I can use splines that are drawn over top of it to create a more unique shape. So I want to maintain this general shape. And I'm just going to do some, see how it's snapping to the edge? I don't want that snapping. So I'm going to take off my object snap setting. And I'm basically freeforming something in here that gives the stone a bit more of a, a unique shape to it. And that's really what I want to do when I'm creating a natural look to a stone. But I want to maintain that 6 by 12 inch profile. And you can see it's more of a unique finish to it. And there's a bit of artistic license here. And press enter. And now I can delete this. There's my stone. And I can correct this. I can just click on it and make some subtle changes to this. I just want to make these edges more in line with one another. There we go. Okay, where do I want this stone? So this is the manufacturer's profile, albeit 
what we did here was, as per my suggestion, we created a subtle arc. And this is a three inch arc. Um, so you pick your offset lines and I can show you how to do that here. So I'll create this line here, move it straight across. And I'm gonna offset, I'm gonna use the through function just because it may be slightly different than three inch to there. And that looks good. And then use the three point arc. So arc three point. And because I draw it counterclockwise, I'm gonna start on the left side here, pick nearest, and then go to the midpoint of all of this. I'll pick the mid between these two points. I've got my snap setting off, so let me just put that on here. And then go to this edge. And there is my arc, which I can then lay out my stones to reflect that arc, which is excellent because we want the water to run off the driveway. So this is a great way of approaching that. Okay, so now I'm going to put in this stone and it's gonna be my curb stone. Now you'll notice here, we've used the traditional edge strip, which is either an eight or 10 foot piece of aluminum stripping, and then we've used landscape spikes to put it in. So I'm going to take this out so you can see what the difference is with this. And this has a solid hatch to it and some other configuration, great. And I'm going to move this stone so that it is in position. Let's go nearest here to there. There we go. And that's gonna provide my edging. That's gonna provide uh, a very significant surface. Now I'm just gonna move it down a bit. So it lines up with what I've already got there. And you know that I like to be Okay, there we go, let's trim this away. So the actual uh, material, the compressed stone that we're putting in here that we've got hatched here, we're gonna remove, I'm gonna do the same here. Hopefully it'll work out okay. And that's why I needed to go right down to that edge treatment. And this is some sort of geotextile material. So I will stretch that and it's designed to Make sure that I'll pick nearest here. And stretch that over so it fills in there. Now look, it's trying to snap down below. I don't want that. I'm gonna pick a none. There we go. And then I can trim to that geotextile just so it looks proper. You know, I wanna make sure everything looks as, as good as it can with what we want. That's good. Okay. Now, anytime you have something like this occur, you can always click on it. And then because it is a hatch with a defined edge, I can extend that edge. I don't know what's happened here. I got a couple of weird things that are going on in, in here. Could have been just because of the way we trimmed it or anything like that. Um, I'm going to see if I can fix that up just so it looks a bit better because I don't like that hole that it's created. And I'm going to pick none. There we go. It doesn't matter that it overlaps. But in this case, I want to create a footing. And uh, you can see what I've done here with grade here. I'm going to move this over here. Select nearest as well. Let's go down a bit lower. And this one, I'm going to select none. And I've got my F8 on, so it's drawing everything horizontally and vertically. I want to embed this in a footing. So what is the point of the footing? The footing will keep this in place. Uh, prevent lift in movement. Now footing is usually a concrete slab and I want the footing to be wide enough to be able to grip this and to provide some more support. So I'm going to create a rectangular footing that's oh, approximately 18 inches wide by about eight inches deep. So I'll create a rectangle at 18 comma negative eight. There we go. That's a good size footing and I'll move that in place. And there's all sorts of techniques with this and it depends on the municipality and what some of the requirements are um, in order to get something that's really good and solid and in place. But I'm positioning that footing and I really want it 
more or less centered uh, on this location. So I'm going to move the footing from its mid between two points to where it's already crossing this stone. So mid between two points. Okay, that stone is slightly irregular in shape. So that's not too bad. And I wa want to have that footing at least two inches deep, like this uh, stone set into the footing, sorry, about two inches. So I'm simply going to offset this stone, uh, this uh, footing two inches to see whether, see, I can go just a little bit deeper. So I will move this up. That's about right. And then trim that off. So there, it's set in there. Now, there's arguments to be made. I mean, water could seep in here, lift the stone up. There could be all sorts of problems with that. We could put some reinforcement bars that we drill into the stone and up and down, and that would suffice as well. Um, you can actually take this stone uh, curb and actually chip it so it's triangular in shape, so it won't want to push out. There's all sorts of techniques that we can do. We've already gone beyond what the norm is for uh, setting something on an edge so it, the curb doesn't spill over. So that being the case, I'm not too concerned about that right now. It is a technique where I will run rebar in the footing and the rebar will be a half inch diameter. Um, so let's draw some circles here. And center diameter, put that in. And the diameter is 0.5. And I'll mirror this from the midpoint. That looks good. And then I can copy that rebar. And four would probably be a good number in there. You can see I'm not overly concerned about measuring. Uh, you got to remember when they're actually installing the rebar, um, this is not a structural rebar for the purposes of meeting some sort of guidelines. It's simply rebar that you know, we're putting in place so that it you know, protects the, the footing uh, from cracking. And once we set this footing and the rebar in and that edge stone, it's going to be very easy to put in all the different compact materials that we need to have in here. Now, you'll notice that there's a challenge. And the challenge is the fact that we now have this on the outside. And we should really wrap around the footing. And that's another thing we can do is if we've got an impenetrable membrane of some sort, we could wrap it here so that it actually um, prevents water from seeping into this footing. Those are all possibilities. So what I'm going to do here is check the distance. So I'll click on Tools, Inquiry Distance, to see how they've actually offset these items. It looks like a quarter inch offset. And I'm going to do this. So this is part of um, pol uh, polyline editing. So I'll offset by 0.25 this line once and twice. There we go. And it's slightly out, but that's OK. And then I'm going to trim to this and that, that element and that element, and this element and this one. And then I'm going to trim so that this line will contour around that footing. So I'll select trim. And it's this line that I want to have contour with this one. So now I'm going to get rid of that. And that and this and this. I'll do the same for the next one. So I'm trimming this to contour with that. And this will hopefully make sense once we've done it all. That. And then the last one is this and this. And you're going to see what's going to happen here. Great. Now, when I fillet them, 
because I'm filleting a polyline to a regular line. Oh, I've got a dimension there, so I guess like fill it. This is new in some of the newer versions of CAD. It stays with the program. Oh, it used to always default to zero. So now I gotta do that myself. I'll type in R and eight and enter for radius and I'll put in zero. Good. And now I'm going to fill it this to that and see what it's doing. It's taking on the properties of that. Um, I accidentally had two lines there, but you can see what's not happened. It's taken on the properties of that line. Perfect. Now I'm going to trim the rest of this compacted granular to what I have there. There we go. And I don't need that anymore. So this line in here was part of that original uh, boundary line. So I don't need that anymore. Hopefully I can just trim it to that. Yeah, it's not letting me. I can trim it to this. There we go. And now I can zoom out. So I like this arrangement. Um, there's a couple extra lines here I don't need. I don't need that one. I don't need that one. I like this arrangement because what I've essentially done is instead of using that metal strip and a landscape spike, I've actually created this in such a way that it's going to, um, sorry, trying to, again, trying to do two things at once. It's going to create an edge, which is a natural stone edge, but it's far more secure. And I can bring the grass right up to it. And I don't have to worry about the driveway being pounded uh, with the car tires and it actually moving this edge over, which it does over time, um, even with those large spikes um, that you put in the landscape spikes and to create that edge. This edge is far more secure than this edge here. Um, there is a concern though, and it has to do with maintenance. A lot of salt on this driveway could create some damage in here um, and also create some uh, heave, frost heave. So we have to be careful with knowing how the client is going to maintain this what they're going to use to clear the material but this is a far better edge for our purposes and now all i need to do is adjust some of these dimensions here and this should be at seven or at it's a six inch wide unit and you'll notice that i'm going to be slightly out because i've got a, a curved surface so i'll put this in there we go i've got a curved surface so, so i got lucky here by hitting exactly six inches. And sometimes you have to make that adjustment by typing it in. But that will be my profile that I'm gonna be using for my driveway. And this is something where I'm combining manufacturer's recommendations with compact, with the sand, um, as well as I'm using techniques of arcing uh, to allow the water and eventually snow as it melts to leave the surface of the driveway as well as I'm embedding an edge course to give that extra strength. And I'm pretty confident now that I can bring the sod right up to there. And with that edge and the sod at that level, it will make for a perfect profile to allow me to maintain and cut this grass uh, the way it should. So here's a couple of different methods. There's nothing wrong with using or combining two or three different methods to create something and that will work for your particular project. Now that the sectional profiles are done, we actually have to turn around and create the different viewports. So you can see here, in this particular case, I'm gonna turn on the viewport later so you can see the different boxes. The viewports are showing the materials as well as um, the pattern sequences. This is the image that was created originally. All you need to do is find your particular image. And sometimes, there we go, you can see how this one's slightly different now. I'd have to include the notes that represent that particular image. And these viewports can be scattered anywhere on the page and they're just a reflection of the drawing that you have. So when you're taking a look at the model space drawing, the images can be set anywhere on this page. It doesn't matter where they are. It's easier to work with them together in one specific area. I've got another one that I just created for this demonstration just to show you how to create a different edge. And then once you've arranged everything, 
put in all your uh, text information, your sectional bubbles and everything else, then you can go back to L1 and L2 and update all of your reference bubbles. So this C1L3 refers to a very specific section of the driveway and that needs to be reflected in what we have here in the driveway detail and so on. Once this is completed, you can see the detail level that we need to have this uh, in L3 to make sure we've identified the materials, the layouts, the patterns, how it's to be installed, the different manufacturer uh, information that's here. Make sure that you turn off the viewport layer because it interferes with the drawing quite a bit. So now the images are more free flowing in the locations that they're meant to be. So the next assignment is to do a section through the driveway as well as through the walkway. And they can be completely different materials in different areas and also showing the different patterns that you're going to be working through your project. And once this is done, you've labeled it, completed it, dated it, and you've updated L1, L2. Uh, that will be the completion of assignment number four.